This is an African History Times presentation. Welcome. Cleopatra's life was no picnic. In fact, it was plain tragic. Cleopatra was a very smart person. It is said that she spoke nine languages. Egyptian, Greek, Latin, Syrian, Arabic, Hebrew, Ethiopian, Persian, and Aramaic. She was the first in the royal Ptolemaic family to speak the native language of Egypt, the language that the majority of ordinary people spoke in Egypt in her time. If you consider that her family had ruled Egypt for about 300 years, and yet no one in her family had learned the native Egyptian language before, Cleopatra must have been unique. She was also said to be shrewd of a diplomat. She also partook in the studying of medicine, alchemy, economics, history, and geography. Yet her intelligence and learning are not what is generally known about her. As far as I'm concerned, this is a tragedy in itself. The images that we get today from the media about royalty are very much influenced by Disney stories of beautiful princesses and handsome princes. Today, probably the most famous royals the world over are the British royal family. Stories about their weddings and newborn babies saturate even the most serious of media outlets. Between the Disney stories and the media coverage about the British royal family, people cannot be blamed for thinking that being a royal is fun and games. In ancient times, being royalty had its perks and it had its benefits. But it also had many shortcomings, especially for the female members of royal families. The life of the queen we'll be talking about today was no fun and games. The life of Cleopatra, the famous queen of Egypt, was tragic in the extreme, even for ancient times. Cleopatra is undoubtedly one of the most famous figures from history. And in my opinion, she is one of the most tragic figures from history. The fact that she is still famous today is very unusual. Very few women who lived in ancient times are still famous in 2022. Cleopatra was born in 69 BCE and died in 30 BCE. She lived at a time when women did not get to shine very much. Not to mention having a woman who lived back then being still famous 2000 years later. It is possible that what has contributed to her fame is her interaction with three important leaders of the Roman Republic, Julius Caesar, Marc Antony, and Octavian. Octavian would later be known as Augustus, the first emperor of the Roman Empire. But many other people interacted with influential Roman political and military figures, but not all those people are famous today as Cleopatra is. As we will see later in this story, what makes Cleopatra's interaction with these major Roman figures worth talking about two millennia later is how she influenced the trajectory of the lives and decisions of these rock star figures from ancient Rome. But if interaction with Caesar Andoni and Augustus made Cleopatra famous. The story behind why ancient Roman writers elevated Cleopatra to really seen levels of fame is potentially filled with tragedy. You see, the ancient Roman and Greek writers who wrote the stories about Cleopatra that have come down to us might have been using her as a scapegoat for some of the problems that led to the destruction of the Roman Republic 
and the drastic change of the Roman state from being a republic to its becoming an empire. I will explain later why this might be so. By the time Cleopatra was born in 69 BCE, her family, the Ptolemies, had been running Egypt for about 300 years. The last 100 or so years had seen the decline of the family's power and influence. Part of the family's decline had to do with the rise of the Roman Republic as a power in the Eastern Mediterranean region. Rome was now in the habit of running the foreign affairs of the Egyptian state. Going as far as telling the Ptolemaic pharaohs who to conquer and when. Rome sometimes even had influence over who would be pharaoh, especially in cases whereby there was more than one claimant to the Egyptian throne. Cleopatra's family had clearly seen better days, but those days were over. See, Egypt had the bad luck of being the breadbasket of the the Mediterranean region. A lot of Rome's food came from Egypt. Rome was no longer allowing Egypt complete freedom, as this might negatively affect Rome's food supply. This is the situation upon which Cleopatra was born. The strangeness and the tragedy of Cleopatra's life began before she was even born. It is very possible that her mother and her father were very closely related. It's even possible that her parents were brother and sister, even. Royal families of that era tended to be very insensuous. From Europe to the Middle East. But the Egyptian royal families took incense to the next level. Even before Cleopatra's family started ruling Egypt in 323 BCE. The Egyptian pharaohs believed that their children were too special to marry anyone who did not have Egyptian royal blood. In Egyptian mythology, the god Osiris married his sister Isis in order to maintain the purity of the royal bloodline. Of course, being that these were ancient times, and being that sexism and gender double standards were rife, The limitation on whom the Egyptian royals could marry applied more to the female royal members than to the males. Because of this type of thinking, Egyptian princesses were very likely to marry their cousins and even their brothers. Cleopatra's full name was Cleopatra VII Philopater. Philopater means father loving in Greek. The irony of that name is rich when considering the level of incest among the Egyptian royal families. Cleopatra married two of her younger brothers. The first brother she married was Ptolemy XIII. Cleopatra herself was 18 years old. He was 10. The second brother, Ptolemy XIV, was only 12 and Cleopatra was 22 when they married. She called ruled together with both brothers at different times. The tragedy for Cleopatra was that as a woman, she could not rule alone. So she had to marry her kid brothers in order to rule in tandem with them. Another way to look at this is that the extremely smart and very learned Cleopatra had to co-rule with children who were seen as senior to her just because they were male. To us today, marrying two of your brothers is tragic. But maybe Cleopatra didn't see it that way. After all, she was raised in an environment where such things were to be expected. Maybe the tragedy for Cleopatra was being married to two children when you were a fully fleshed adult, children whom you would be smarter than even if they were adults. But maybe the real tragedy was getting married 
to your brothers when you didn't like either of them. As the Ptolemaic family's control over Egypt was waning, the infighting over who will rule Egypt got worse and worse. Cleopatra participated, directly and indirectly, in the killing of both the younger brothers she married. She even killed her sister also. All of this was purely over power. The tragedy here is that it is difficult to fault Cleopatra. She probably felt that her siblings would kill her if she didn't kill them first. 